Hello there. Yes, it's time to announce the winner of my Crisis of Conscience giveaway competition. And I closed the survey, I think after a week or so, and chose at random, at random, one of my subscribers. And the way I chose was to use a random number generator online, put in the maximum number of uh, participants, which was 340. It churned out a number which was number 71, and survey number 71 just happened to be, I can announce, da -da 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 -da, uh, Pierre Burmester who just so happens to have his own YouTube channel. I'm gonna put a link in the description. It's absolutely fantastic. I actually stumbled on this guy's work a while ago and uh, when his name came up, I didn't realize it was the same person. But he emailed, I emailed him to say, congratulations, you've won, what's your address? He emailed back and said, um, here's my address, but you know, I would really like your input on my channel. So he's given me a link to his playlist of videos, which as I said, I'm putting in the description and they're absolutely fantastic. And I'm actually glad that this guy is in touch with me because I can remember thinking a while ago when I stumbled on this channel, wow, this guy is fantastic. I mean, really, really good videos. I'm actually quite jealous <laughs> of how good his videos are. Um, I hope we can collaborate at some point because he too is, you know, secular minded, accepting of evolution, what have you. So uh, I'm really thrilled that Pierre has won a copy of Crisis of Conscience. Now, as you remember, part of the competition was I was asking my subscribers for questions and I've been inundated. You can imagine with 340 survey um, participants, there were a lot of questions. <laughs> Um, and I've decided to actually answer those questions in my next video instead. Why? Because uh, as many of you will know, um, the Crisis of Conscience giveaway competition stirred up quite a controversy, which I think it's probably appropriate that I talk about a little bit. The reason for the controversy, apparently, and I've mentioned this, I've written about it reasonably extensively, on JW survey, I've written an article called The Trouble with Apostates, why it shouldn't put you off being one. And again, a link will be in the description. And um, unfortunately, what I have had a problem with since the very beginning of my activism in 2011 is basically ex-JWs, <laughs> like me. Or not quite like me, because um, Although, when, you, when you're an ex-JW, I should just mention, because I understand there will be Jehovah's Witnesses watching this, many of whom, or some of whom, might be crowing, ah, well, you see now, this is where we're getting down to the nitty-gritty. Ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, bitter, angry, at each other's throat. This is what awaits those who leave God's clean, pure organisation. I can understand why there would be reason for crowing. But there isn't actually reason for crowing, and I'm going to explain why. When you leave a high control cult like Jehovah's Witnesses, it leaves you very angry. It, it just does. Um, especially if you've been in it for many years, and I was in it for just over 20 years, so two decades of my life. And that's actually just the baptised years. Don't forget I was baptised when I was 11. So it's 20 odd years from the age of 11. So I was in this as well when I was a child. A lot, a lot of time spent uh, basically wasting precious time on this planet um, serving a cult and bypassing your own logic, bypassing your own impulses and common sense to do purely the will of some guys um, in New York who you've never met, and you know, dis, you know, shunning people, and um, you know, all of the all of the kind of residual things that go along with being in Je Jehovah's Witnesses, it takes its toll on you. And when you finally wake up, yes, you're absolutely elated and overjoyed because you feel like you've dodged a bullet. You feel like, okay, I've wasted all that time, but at least. I can start my life afresh. But you still have a lot of anger, uh, a lot of serious you know, psychological issues. What have I done? How could I have been so stupid? How could I have wasted all this time? And 
one thing that has helped me with dealing with this anger is to make videos, write articles, redirect, redirect that avalanche of anger at Watchtower, but in a peaceful and progressive way and strategic way to say, okay, this is what you've done to me. Uh, I'm sure as hell going to use whatever talents I may have to try and stop it from happening to others. And I think I've mentioned before, the biggest joy I get is when um, I find out that a child, someone's child will no longer be being brought up as a witness because their parent has stumbled on one of my videos or read one of my articles. There is no greater joy than that, than rescuing the next generation so that um, Jehovah's Witnesses won't even get a foothold on, on their life. There will be no regrets for them. But whereas not just me, but many others redirect our anger towards Watchtower, there are a number a number of XJWs, especially on, on YouTube and Facebook and forums and what have you, who just cannot help but redirect their anger towards other XJWs. And the ones that they most enjoy redirecting their anger towards are the ones who um, are perceived as being more prominent, perceived as having more of an audience perceived as being having more of a public image. Um, so ever since I got involved with activism, which we're now going back to 2011, from my very earliest attempts at, um, at causing trouble <laughs> for Watchtower, uh, I've had people on my case, I really have. Um, even setting up JW Survey had an element of controversy attached to it. I can remember I was, um, I thought the only way of setting up a survey, a decent survey, which ended up being the way I'm doing it now, is to use a paid service, which I'm now doing. Um, so, so I went on on the forum and said, hey guys, um, I th I've got this really great idea for a survey. Why don't we all, you know, chip in together and, and pay for this? <laughs> and, you know, I look back now and I was so naive, but I was absolutely besieged with you're trying to get money you're trying to profit who do you think you are asking for money and anyway it was a big a big thing but thankfully um john hoyle my mentor my guru <laughs> came to my rescue and said listen if you want a survey i'll build your website and you don't have to pay me anything so that's how jw survey got started in the first place controversy and um i can scarcely point to a year that's a full calendar year since then when there hasn't been some huge controversy where XJWs, my fellow XJWs have rounded on me and probably made me more of a subject of scrutiny than Watchtower itself. So in other words, Watchtower goes on the back burner and no, let's, let's focus our attention on this guy because we really don't like him. <laughs> and we're afraid that his ideas and what and his opinions and what he's saying might redirect other XJWs from what we're trying to tell them. And the the biggest controversy that I had was last year when I started talking about aggressive activism. And aggressive activism is where you have XJWs picketing and being confrontational and intimidating and getting in the faces of Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, quite clearly, people who do that are not doing it to help those Jehovah's Witnesses. Quite clearly, they're projecting, again, their own anger and uh, taking their anger out on helpless cult victims in this case. Um, but simply for making that observation, without naming names, without naming names, simply for saying, maybe this isn't a good way of doing our activism, um, I was completely and utterly pummeled with not just criticism, but um, quite serious accusations. Um, people called me a, a stalker, a cult leader, a cyber bully, a wife beater. How that came up, I have no idea. I can remember uh, Diana <laughs> when that came up because the guy in question said, oh, she looks like she's being beaten. And Diana, Diana kind of watched that bit and said, oh, thanks very much. <laughs> so apparently I'm a wife beater. No evidence required. Um, guilty uh, until proven innocent. 
um, and also a sexual predator. That was another accusation that was hurled at me purely because I had dared to voice an, uh, an opinion that went against uh, some other XJWs, particularly those of um, the Christian evangelical persuasion. And I'm not saying that all Christian XJWs are in favour of aggressive activism. I've just personally noticed that the majority of the loudest proponents of um, aggressive activism are those who are either Christian evangelical or those who have basically fallen under the spell or under the thrall or under the personality cult of evangelical um, activists. So that was last year. Fast forward this year and all I do is give away a book and suddenly I am public enemy number one, uh, this massive criminal, an opportunist, profiteering on someone else's work, an intellectual property thief, I think was the latest one I've heard, um, simply because I'm offering a hard copy of a copyrighted work that everyone else is already distributing on their websites in PDF form. And at this point, you might be thinking, hang on, what, what did you just say? I don't understand. Well, copyright applies to both hard copies and digital copies, so PDFs. And for some years now, Crisis of Conscience has been freely distributed online. And even one of the people who was most loudly criticizing me for distributing a hard copy, an unauthorized hard copy of Crisis of Conscience, admitted that she herself had the same PDF copy and it later turned out that she had it on her website being distributed. <laughs> so she was doing exactly, exactly the same thing that she and her husband had taken the time to make an entire video criticizing me for. So there's the distribution element that people were upset about. And there's also um, people were up in arms about the logo on the back again, it wasn't me who did it, my friend did it. I don't think it was the best of ideas. And actually I spoke to my friend um, last night on Facebook and he admitted, you know, it was just, he obviously didn't have any bad motives when he put my logo on the back. It, he just thought it was a cool idea to have up to date uh, online resources advertised on the back of his copies so that anyone who managed to get hold of a copy who wasn't aware of JW Facts, JW Survey, could immediately see what the address was. He had no idea that it would cause such a huge problem. And of course, it's only causing a problem because it's being capitalized and exploited by those who have a serious ax to grind against me, who have a history of obsessing and fixating over me and my work. Um, and the interesting thing is, is that jwfacts.com is also advertised on the back of this book. I haven't so far heard of Paul Grundy getting any disruption or people banging down his door because his website is advertised on the back, but apparently it's different with me for some reason. Um, but just to reassure people and completely throw a spanner in the works of those who are on my case, and completely remove any legitimate uh, accusations or criticisms they may have against me, I'm changing the rules of my competition. I am no longer giving away this bootleg copy to, what was his name, Pierre, sorry Pierre. Pierre, you are no longer, I'm afraid, going to get this bootleg copy. You are going to get my authorized copy of crisis of conscience and nobody is going to tell me that I am wrong or a criminal or in any way underhanded for giving away my own authorized copy, which I don't have a replacement for. I'm going to have to go out and at some point shell out more money for this. But um, that way, nobody really can justifiably level criticism at me. And it completely, in my view, exposes those who are making a big deal about this as utter hypocrites and people who really do need to sit down, look at themselves and think, what went wrong? What has gone wrong in my life so that I need to fixate and obsess over this guy in Croatia and make more videos about him and spend more time talking about him and, you know, um, 
adding to controversies about him on Facebook groups and what have you, that I'm even spending on the governing body or Watchtower. So uh, my message to uh, my friends and those who've been watching this thinking, oh no, what's going on, is please don't attack these people. Um, I think if anything, they need help and they certainly won't benefit from feeling as though they're being persecuted. If anything, they'll take it out on me. But my message for those who are exploiting such tedious and um, futile and um, really silly causes for complaint is, listen, I'm not going to be bullied. I'm not going to be put off. And I explained in my JW survey article that um, actually my YouTube channel, this channel, is from now on going to be actually more atheist. So I'm no longer going to be afraid when it comes to talking about um, subjects that could be construed as atheist or basically advancing the arguments for atheism because I have found, especially over the last weeks when I've been interacting with um, Christian XJWs or Evangelical XJWs, that they do not have the first clue about the arguments for atheism and the arguments for unbelief. And I've noticed on Pierre's channel, just from a very quick glance, he's already wading in there and tackling some of these subjects, and I think I should be too. So, you know, I won't be put off, neither will those who are also doing the, the advancing the secular arguments with me. Um, and I hope that my viewers will understand my reasons for, you know, drawing a line in the sand and saying, nope, sorry, I'm not going to be budged on this. But JW Survey will continue to be religiously neutral and we won't put up with anybody um, bullying or um, trying to impose their understanding on other readers, whether it's atheist or believer. So anyway, those are just a few announcements and I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to go through the questions, but I will do that on my next video. And congratulations to Pierre for winning an authorised copy of Crisis of Conscience and thank you for watching.